Paul Rykoff is, of course, the founder and the CEO of the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. He is joining us now. It's nice to see you again in person. Saw you last you, night uh, over at the Intrepid. Congratulations on a successful evening. Thank you. I want to ask you about some of the conversations that continue as a result of this, uh, what we witnessed last night, digging into some of the key moments from the forum, most notably one from Donald Trump that raised a lot of eyebrows in the military community, his comments about the top military brass. Take, take a listen. Yeah. Let me read some of the things you said. I know more about ISIS than the generals do. Believe me. Was that the truth? Well, the generals under Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton have not been successful. Do you know ISIS, more about ISIS than they do? I think under the leadership of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, the generals have been reduced to rubble. They have been reduced to a point where it's embarrassing for our country. So just bottom line, what's your reaction to that? And not exclusively yours, but the military community, these individuals that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis, what do they think to hear a potential commander-in-chief in effect disparaging or perhaps bashing, whether he claims it's partisan, the generals, the heads of our military I, system? I, I don't think anybody wants to hear folks dumping on our generals. I mean, they've been in combat for you know now 13 years uh, or longer. And, you know, they've been in the fight and they've been leading us nobly. And, and if they, uh, you know, should be gone, they probably would have been held accountable by the military. Um, but I think it's unprecedented to, to hear that kind of talk. Um, but it was also unprecedented to hear hard questions from veterans. I think the real takeaway is that veterans issues were finally front and center. We talked about military sexual trauma, VA reform, suicide. We even talked about how Trump's immigration policies would impact uh, troops serving in Iraq who might not be citizens yet. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's new, right. new policy territory. And I think that's a win for veterans. It was a win, but it's not the end of the fight. We've got a long road ahead, and we want to keep this conversation going. You, you were talking about the sexual assault conversation last night between Trump and Matt last night. I want, if we can cue that up really quickly, yeah. to tee up that conversation, because it's one a lot of people are talking about tonight. This was a question about a tweet that he first put out in 2013. Take a right, listen. Right. In 2013, on this subject, you tweeted this, quote, 26,000 unreported sexual assaults in the military, only 238 convictions. What did these geniuses expect when they put men and women together? Well, it is, it, is a, it is a correct tweet. There are many people that think that that's absolutely correct. And we need to have a strength. So this and should we need have to been have... expected. And does that mean the well, only way to well, fix it is to take women it's happening, out of the military? And, and by the way, since then, it's gotten worse. No, not to kick them out, but something has to be happened. Just give us your take on that. And for women in the military community right now, obviously this problem hasn't gone away. Trump received some criticism for saying that they need to have a better judicial court system right. within the military. All it takes is watching a few good men to know that there's a pretty substantial one that exists right, right now. What do you take on this topic of women and the parity and the effort to Mil create Military them? sexual assault and, and military sexual trauma is a very, very critical issue. But it doesn't just impact women. It impacts men as well. I mean, that's part of the sophistication we need to hear from candidates, that they actually understand the issue. He kind of got toward the military justice improved uh, that Senator Gillibrand has put forward. We didn't really get into specifics on that. I think we didn't get into a lot of specifics. That, that's what you saw last night, right? Yeah. The veterans actually asked specific questions, and we required specific answers. We didn't really get them. We need another three hours, I think, frankly, to get into that kind of detail, but it did jumpstart a conversation, and that's what we wanted to do last night. Yeah. We wanted to start a conversation. It wasn't going to end last night. It was going to keep the country focused on these issues, and now we're talking about military sexual trauma on national TV. Uh, that's important for our military and both genders in the military. I think no one disputes that we would be better served if this conversation happened every night, not just yes. once in the course of a campaign. Yeah. To Hillary Clinton, she made a promise last night that some people say may be a tough one to back up. Take a listen. Yeah. We're going to work to make sure that they have the support. They have special forces, as you know. They have enablers. They have you know, surveillance, intelligence, reconnaissance to help. They are not going to get ground troops. We are not putting ground troops into Iraq ever again. And we're not putting ground troops into Syria. I was on deck at the Intrepid last night talking to many of the men and women that you know well. These are people who served in Africa, Iraq, Afghanistan, all these places. They say the words of a potential commander in chief matter. They yeah, they carry yeah, weight. Yeah, yeah. You, saw the, you saw the reaction in the room. I mean, there are troops in Iraq right now. Yeah. Okay, So to say there won't be is just not true, right? They're there. And I think that underscores another problem we've got, which is that there's a tremendous disconnect. We feel like our friends in Iraq and Afghanistan are forgotten. Folks often call uh, Afghanistan Forgotistan because they feel like America is not paying attention. 
attention. So we need our commander in chief to understand people are in harm's way, how many, how many have died, how many have been wounded. That's really understanding the human cost of this. Yeah. And it's it's an important obligation of the commander in chief to remind everyone we're at war. Not so you dispute. have to acknowledge that what, no matter how they phrase it in, in the White House, we have people in combat every single day. Yeah, in combat and frankly the war at home is still so critical as so many deal with PTSD here as well. Absolutely. Paul, good to see you. Thank